Okay, so we have your W-2 and mortgage deduction, your receipts, charitable deductions, mileage claims. Let's see, are we missing anything else? Oh, do you owe any use tax? What's use tax? It's usually owed when you buy something from an out-of-state company or website that didn't charge you California sales tax. So do you think you may owe use tax? Gosh. You know, I did a lot of online shopping this year. I think I have some receipts from a few things I bought. Oh, that's easy to add in on your return. Let's see what you have. Oh. The revenue collected from use tax helps pay for important California services like public safety, health care, and schools. Remember when you file, pay your use tax. To learn more, visit boe.ca.gov. Paying your use tax. Good for you. Good for California. The Taxpayer's Rights Advocate of the State Board of Equalization wants you to know you have rights. As a California taxpayer, your rights are protected during the assessment and collection of taxes, including the right to courteous and prompt service, and the right to be treated fairly during all dealings with Board of Equalization employees and officers of the board. Publication 70, Understanding Your Rights as a California Taxpayer, and Publication 145, California Taxpayer Advocates can be useful in learning about your rights. If you feel the BOE has not resolved your concerns adequately, please contact the Taxpayers' Rights Advocates Office at 1-888-324-2798 or email us. The Taxpayers' Rights Advocate of the State Board of Equalization. We're here for you. It's easy to buy things online these days, but did you know you may need to pay tax on those items? Really? It's called use tax. And just like sales tax, the use tax you pay to California will help fund important services like public safety, healthcare, and schools. But how do you know if you owe use tax? When you buy things online, look to see if you were charged tax when you checked out. If you weren't, you may owe use tax. It's easy to figure out how little you may owe. For most purchases, you don't even have to save your receipts. Just use this convenient use tax table available in your income tax instructions. Find your adjusted gross income to see how much you may owe and enter that amount when preparing your state income taxes. It's that simple. No looking through files and no hassles. You've paid your use tax for the whole year. That was easy. Paying your use tax. Good for you. Good for California. We're committed to supporting our communities, teaming up with businesses large and small, 
improving our roads and schools, investing in law enforcement and our environment. Together, we're funding a better quality of life. We're the California State Board of Equalization. The BOE was created in 1879 to equalize property tax assessment practices throughout California. Our responsibility has grown quite a bit since then. Today, the BOE administers more than 30 taxes and fees that provide one-third of all the revenue generated in our great state. And we're efficient. More than 99% of the money you contribute supports services and programs that benefit all of us in California. When you drive down our many highways, see a police officer helping someone in need, or enjoy a walk along a pristine beach, think about what makes it possible. Whether you're a business owner, making a purchase, or just filling up your gas tank, your contributions are important to our state's economic health. And the greatest part, we're doing it together. We're ready to work with you. Take advantage of our free seminars, helpful classes, instructional videos, and mobile applications. Also, use our online services. It's easy to do business with us from anywhere, at any time. Our partnership equals success. Learn more at boe.ca.gov. Together, we're supporting our communities and funding a better quality of life. Okay, so we have your W-2 and mortgage deduction, your receipts, charitable deductions, mileage claims. Let's see, are we missing anything else? Oh, do you owe any use tax? What's use tax? It's usually owed when you buy something from an out-of-state company or website that didn't charge you California sales tax. So do you think you may owe use tax? Gosh. You know, I did a lot of online shopping this year. I think I have some receipts from a few things I bought. Oh, that's easy to add in on your return. Let's see what you have. Oh. The revenue collected from use tax helps pay for important California services like public safety, health care, and schools. Remember when you file, pay your use tax. To learn more, visit boe.ca.gov. Paying your use tax. Good for you. Good for California.
It's the number. It's just the number. Good morning. Uh, can you have her confirm with, we're within the 120 days? Mm. Thank you all for coming out today. Uh, this is day three of our Board of Equalization meeting. Uh, we uh, went into a recess yesterday. We did not adjourn, and we just have one item of business um, that's continued from yesterday. So, uh, Ms. Kelly. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman Ma. Um, it's my understanding that a member would like to make a motion to resend the vote on the Section 40 Rob Lowe matter from yesterday. Uh, that's permissible. Okay. Yes, Madam Chair. I'd like to uh, motion that we rescind H2 sub item 3 uh, and then take the matter up to allow me to be consistent with my previous vote on the matter. Okay. Second. <clears throat> okay. So without further discussion, let's just take a roll call for uh, the vote. Uh, Ms. Richmond, please call the roll. Chairwoman Ma. Aye. Is Ms. Harkey. This is the with. Aye. No. Oh, is this to um, to rescind the vote first? Yes. Okay. okay. To rescind the vote, aye. Aye. Mr. Harton. Aye. Mr. Runner. Aye. Ms. Dowers. Aye. Okay. And on the matter, right? H two point three to so, adopt the. Yes. So a motion may now be made to uh, vote on the matter. So adopt staff recommendation on the section forty summary I'll, decision. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, Ms. Harkey moves, Mr. Runner seconds. Um, we call the roll again. Ms. Richmond on this. Chairwoman Ma. Aye. Ms. Harkey. Aye. Mr. Harton. No. Mr. Runner. Aye. Ms. Stowers. No. Motion carries. Thank okay. you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we are, we are going to reconvene um, today's annual board meeting with all of the county assessors. Um, we thought we would uh, switch it up a little bit um, to have it here in Sacramento. Um, not only is it comfortable here, uh, you're all here for your legislative day, and we thought we could talk about, you know, items of importance uh, before the start of the legislative season instead of talking about things after uh, this, the, the legislative uh, term ends and, you know, instead of planning for, um, we're going to plan for the current, most immediate future, and it talk about issues of importance. Members. It also saves us money not having to travel with all of our <laughs> staff. So this is all good. It's all right here. And I really appreciate you coming. I'm glad we could combine these activities. Uh, it's always a pleasure to meet with you all. Anybody? Again, yeah, thanks. And uh, it, is, it is a little more convenient for all of us. And that always is better for all of our schedules. But it's good to be good with you guys again. Yes. Anything? Members? Um, Thank you all for coming. We appreciate your uh, attendance here today. We look forward to your comments. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, Con Controller Yee would like to thank you for your dedicated public service. She understands the many challenges that each one of you face, and she supports your positive and steadfast commitment to resolve all issues. Great. OK, so item number, oh, Ms. Richmond, please call the next item. So our next item is the assessor's conference. The Assessors Address these Conference. Okay, welcome. Um, please introduce yourself for the record, and you could take as much time as you need to talk about whatever you'd like, and then we will go into uh, breakout sessions after. Do you want to do introductions first and then yes. come back? Sure. My name is Rich Benson. I am president of the California Assessors Association and Assessor Recorder Clerk for Marin County. And, uh, uh, and well, with us here today is representation of assessors from across the state. Okay. okay. Hi there. I'm Ernie Dronenberg. Thanks for your holding this meeting today. I think it's a convenient location, but anytime we're with the board, it's a convenient location. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm the assessor recorder clerk for the county of San Diego. Good morning. I'm Leslie Morgan. I'm the Shasta County Assessor Recorder, and I am the CAA Education Committee Chair. Good morning. My name is Carmen Chu, and I serve as the elected assessor for San Francisco. 
Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Benson. So thank you again very much. Um, it's both my pleasure and honor to be here with you today and after, uh, uh, as we've met in the past. After my comments before the board yesterday, I reflected on, with some colleagues on the significance and the unparalleled reputation of the California Assessors Association. Indeed, our reputation is perhaps the most significant contribution any of us can make to our institutions. Each individual assessor's office, the California Assessors Association, and the Board of Equalization, that our achievements leave it better than we found it and leave it with a reputation of the highest regard one that anyone, including the most qualified, would be proud to serve. While our individual contributions are transitory, the value associated with an institution's reputation provides the backbone to keep it standing tall with confidence, credibility, integrity, and admiration. I want to express my um, ex experience with the board staff and the board members has been very enjoyable and rewarding. Working with board staff over 31 years has consistently demonstrated their dedication, commitment, and professionalism. As I reread my remarks from October 16, uh, I'm not sure there's much I would change. The important points I brought forward were those of stewardship, succession planning, common principles of equal taxation, public trust, and training that I continue to support today. I concluded those remarks by suggesting a robust collaboration and dialogue recommended that we capture the institutional knowledge of our common resources soon to see how we might improve assessment programs. The board seems like a natural facilitator in this regard, and I continue to wonder if there's ways to explore and improve compliance, uniformity, ethics, standards, technology, computer resources, and more. I'm very motivated by innovation and creativity, as I expect you are, especially when approached by taxpayers who point out where and how parts of our taxation or assessment program could be improved. Our, my remarks are brief today, and again, I wanted to reflect <coughs> pretty much the same thing I did when I did in October, and I'm looking forward to meeting with you and working together with you for 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jennerberg? Uh, I'm the uh, chairman of the legislative committee for the Assessors Association, and um, I was asked to just greet you and tell you a little bit about what we're looking for this year. And we are we're mostly a defensive legislative position uh, year to year, and that is uh, enlightening the legislature on our particular views of bills as they come through. And, most of the time, like I said, we're in a defensive position of trying to stop bills that we think may be well-intended but poorly drafted. So um, this year, we have uh, several bills that we're, we're only proposing three bills. Those would be um, a bill to clarify the presumption of correctness uh, being sponsored by my fellow assessor from Marin, who pointed out uh, a conflict in the law and two statutes. And then uh, because of a court case, the assessor from Calaveras has recommended that we uh, uh, propose a bill and to clarify the results of a court case dealing with uh, partial construction and construction work and process. The last bill that we're proposing is a bill that I sponsored and it deals with adult uh, disability <laughs> children. And this would be um, there's an exclusion in the law for new construction and home replacement for people with handicaps that are forced into either buying a new home or modernizing their current to facilitate the ability of handicapped people to get through a home. Uh, it's very, it was a proposition that was put on the ballot, but it's narrowly drafted to just include the home owner. And so this bill would expand it to include a home where the parents are required to change the home because of a disability that has happened to one of their children. One of the ones that really comes to light is with uh, the veterans coming back from war and they're totally handicapped and their parents are jumping into the breach to take care of them. This would allow them to modify their home so that they could uh, facilitate the, the uh, handicapped soldier without being a tax consequence to that modification, or in some cases completely replacing their home. 
and the risk completing the base. So those are our three bills. We haven't got numbers yet. They've been, they're into Ledge Council, um, and that's basically our agenda. There are two other proposals that I would speak to just so that you're sort of forewarned. Um, uh, I should say better in position to support us, and that would be the, the uh, let the Department of Finance has asked us to put in, um, and we've been working with them to the bill that um, allows us to have a contribution to our staff finances for projects where we've shown that there would be tax savings. Um, and that, um, that bill is two years old, and we just showed the results of the two years old, and they're looking to um, expand and lengthen that bill, uh, the last bill. Um, and the other bill is something that I've heard of, and it was very significant, and I thought I would give you guys a heads up, just like I got a heads up last week, and that's a group of the realtors are proposing a bill that would allow you to um, keep your base forever uh, with your home. So if you bought a home for, let's say, 200000 and you kept it, and you're over 55, we allow you to transfer your old base to your new property. This would allow the same kind of transfer base for everybody, regardless of their age, regardless of the time, and regardless of the amount of times you did it. The current bill is a one time after you're 55, it was put by the legislature as a down zoning helpful bill. Well, that's the bill that's been around for several years. They're, they're proposing a, the same kind of concept with no 55 threshold and no limit on the amount of time. So heads up, here's something coming that I found that uh, may be something that you hadn't heard of, but we're going to, you're hearing it before the guys in the back of the room heard it <laughs> even. So thank you for your attention. So thank you. So um, as the ledge chair, uh, we appreciate hearing these bills earlier than later. And I think when we were, the four of us were members uh, in the legislature, we wouldn't involved, uh, we wouldn't involve the State Board of Equalization until very late in the process. And then it would get to appropriations and there would be a big bill because nobody was really uh, working and understanding kind of what the ramifications are. So coming earlier with these bills, giving us a heads up, um, letting us know if once you do get a sponsor and a bill number, if you want us to support the bill, you know, please come uh, to our next meeting and, and propose that, um, you know, either support or opposition it works both ways. But we, I think, appreciate um, weighing in and just knowing what's going on and what you all are working on your priorities. Well, thank you so. for the invitation and, and I'll gladly, as a ledge chair, try to attend and Great. give you an update. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Morgan. Good morning again. So as the Education Committee has worked on new training this past year, um, one of the things we've done is we've broken up the class organization between our areas. So this helped us get the ball rolling and resulted in some of the upcoming courses we have on the schedule now. Hotel valuation and intangibles is actually scheduled for Monday. The Bay Area is hosting that so that we have WebEx and on-site training. Gas station valuation is um, coming along. We've done some um, gathering of information to put that together. We also have Marshall and Swift training coming up in Solano and Butte counties in March. So it's been really successful breaking that up. In addition, our CASA organization has again um, scheduled a very successful year. They have eight classes this year between the 16-17 season. The first five of those classes had 2,295 attendees, and then the January Reading Legal Descriptions course had 718 attendees. That's 3,013 attendees for these training um, classes. So we still have two to go, but they've done a great job. We're hoping to work with more of our CAA subcommittees, such as our business chiefs and real property, to coordinate more training. Some of the new ideas include low-income housing, and reviewing appraisals. So through the efforts of the statewide training and the benefits of WebEx, we believe that the CAA has promoted consistency and standardization. The staff at the BOE is instrumental 
to our success. And as the CAA Education Committee Chair, I'd like to thank David Young for his support, as well as Dean Kinney, Sherry Kinkle, Don Barrage, Lisa Thompson, and Glenna Schultz. It's not a complete, complete list, but they are, these are the staff members I've been working with over the last two years, and I attribute many of our successes to their support. So thank you for allowing them to work with us so diligently. Thank you. Um, when you talk about gas station training, I know I've talked to Mr. Gao about this um, with the underground storage tanks. It's sometimes very hard for us to figure out who the owner is and whether they're paying that underground storage tank. So maybe we could work together to uh, try to kind of figure out and make sure people are complying and paying because that's one area that we are having a, a little bit of difficulty. Yes, and we agree, and even within our offices, it's really important us, for us to coordinate between our business and real property units for all of the items within any of these gas stations. It gets really clouded, and working okay. with the board, working in inter-county-wise, and, and keeping everybody appraised of all the um, stumbling blocks is really important. Okay, great. Okay, Ms. Chu. Thank you. Uh, first, good morning to the board and, of course, to our colleagues. I want to recognize and thank my local uh, board member, Chairwoman Fiona Ma. I want to thank you for always being available to speak with us and always being so present and so engaged. Uh, I also want to thank uh, and recognize my fellow colleague from San Francisco, Malia Cohen, who has come to visit us. Uh, she's a supervisor representing the southeast area of our city, one of the largest new development areas. And so thank you and welcome. Um, I speak in my role as chair of the CAA Standard Committee, and of course, we look forward to working with you and with your staff to make sure that in our 58 counties, we continue to have uniform assessments, uh, which is, of course, no small task. Uh, as you know, we will be meeting later on uh, this afternoon in our kickoff meeting to be able to discuss among the assessors uh, our work plan for the coming year and areas of mutual interest of assessors uh, for the year ahead. Um, but I do want to say that top of mind for us are a few areas. One, making sure that we are continuing our goal of making sure we have fair valuation for aircraft. This is something that is incredibly important to the state uh, and for many of our counties. And I want to thank in advance Chair Jonenberg, Assessors Jeffrey Prang, Larry Stone, Ron Thompson for helping to take the lead uh, among the CAA. Uh, second, I also want to make sure that we are prepared for the changing legislative environment in which we operate. And so making sure that things like the legalization of marijuana, thank you Chairwoman Wa for being such a leader in this area, that we are well prepared as assessors to make sure that we can address uh, some of those challenges. Uh, and finally, I think one of the areas that we are often thinking about here is how it is that we are going to begin to tackle some of the new issues, including how to change or handle changes driven by the new economy, things like short-term rentals and online platforms. How do we make sure that we have fair, uniform assessment for those kinds of businesses, just as we do any other types of businesses? So I'll just close by saying thank you. Thank you in advance for your work with us and with uh, your work with uh, having your dedicated staff, David Gao, Dean Kinney, David Young, who we know will be working with very closely. Thank you. Thank you. And to talk about the, uh, the cannabis, um, Senator Scott Weiner is carrying a bill that would allow not only the BOE offices, but um, county offices to also uh, be able to accept cash from these businesses since uh, you are located in 58 counties and it's not feasible for uh, some of these folks who have to pay all of these different permit fees to have to drive uh, to just our 23 locations perhaps, but um, open it up to more um, locations uh, to uh, make it more convenient for all the people who are trying to um, be in compliance and, and pay all the, the new taxes and fees that are coming forward. So look, look for that. Thank you. Um, any other assessors uh, want to come and give public comment? I know I got a uh, comment card from John Tudor. Um, Napa, and if anyone else would like to make any comments, please come up. Yes. Chairwoman Ma, members of the board, John Tudor, Napa County Assessor, Recorder County Clerk. Uh, I just wanted to be here as the senior assessor in California. I'm also the third longest serving assessor in California history with 30 years this year. Uh, I'm not the oldest assessor. That goes to Larry Stone, who's a few months older than I am. But um, 
I did come to just say that, uh, to echo with my experience, Rich has been around longer than I have, but not as successor, our wonderful working relationship with your staff, including Mr. Gilman and the Taxpayer Advocates Division. I also wanted to invite you to our conference in Napa, April 17th to 20th. And thanks to Mr. Young from your staff, we will be having a panel and we're hoping uh, Member Ma, that, Chairwoman Ma, that you'll be having somebody there to talk about can, uh, cannabis and marijuana and what the impacts will be on local assessors. It's early, uh, but now is the time to start thinking about it. Okay. So we hope you'll attend our conference and I personally extend an invitation to all of you and your staff. Thank you so much. Okay, any other assessor? Mr. Tronenberg? I, I think it would be uh, nice if they'd all stand and introduce themselves so you could find out who's here. Sure, that would be great. <laughs> and call out who's not. I'm Paul Dictos, Fresno County Assessor. I also want to say that I'm the first immigrant, Greek immigrant, to the Assessor in the state of California. Oh, good. I'm Paul Dictos, Fresno County Assessor Recorder. I want to mention sure that I'm the first and the only Greek immigrant to ever be elected to the assessor's office in the state of California. I'm the third most senior, by the way. Okay. <laughs> oh. Well, I was just thinking of what it was like in the days of Dean Andall and, and how it's changed. So I'm happy to be here. I know every one of you, to a greater and lesser extent, it's an honor to be here, and Claude Parrish, Orange County Assessor. Very good. I guess we pass it over here. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Ron Thompson, Alameda County Assessor. Uh, good morning, I'm Larry Stone, the County Assessor of Santa Clara County. I'm Mark Tonneson, Solano County Assessor, and I refuse to throw any of my senior colleagues under the bus. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Jesse Salinas. I'm Yolo County's assessor, clerk, recorder, and register of voters. I think I'm one of the newbies here in, in terms of my assignment, so thank you. Good morning, Kristen Spears, Placer County assessor. Good morning, Leslie Davis, Calaveras County assessor. Carl Weiland, El Dorado County assessor. Steve Bestelavides, uh, San Joaquin County assessor. Good morning. Thank you for entertaining us. Greatly appreciated. <laughs> Charles Merriam, Glenn County, interim assessor, soon to be the assessor, hopefully. <laughs> Good morning. Sue Horn from Nevada County. Uh, Jim Rooney, Amador County Assessor. Robert Menville, uh, Imperial County Assessor. It was a long trip to get here, but I'm happy to be here. Christy Lee, Kings County Assessor, Clerk, Recorder, and Registrar of Voters. Good morning, Peter Aldana, Assessor, County Clerk, Recorder, Riverside County. Good morning, Kristen DePaul, Modoc County Assessor, Recorder. Dan Schleter, Lassen County Assessor. Diane Brown, Butte County Assessor. Arnold Gross, Clusa County Assessor. Barry Beck, Mono County Assessor. Kanan Whitman, Tuolumne County Assessor Recorder. Jeff Prang, Los Angeles County. I'm Gary Savanda, Madera County Assessor. John Lifquist, Kern County Assessor Recorder. Donald O'Connor, Alpine County Assessor Recorder. Hi, I'm Kathy Kelleher, Sacramento County Recorder, and thank you for having this meeting here in my honor. <laughs> thank you. Okay, clap, yes, thank you. Okay, members, do you have any mm -hmm. Words before we break out into um, breakout sessions? No? Anybody else? Okay, so we are going to break out into two breakout sessions. The first one will be 30 minutes. 
The next one will be 25 minutes. Uh, Northern California um, assessors will be in this uh, Dronenberg <laughs> conference room in honor of uh, our, our, our esteemed uh, former member of the Board of, Supervi uh, Board of Equalization as well as assessor. And um, the attendees will be myself and uh, Mr. Runner with our staffs and David Young will be in that room. And then the other room is here. You guys will all stay here, and this will uh, be everyone else. <laughs> Bay Area and Central Southern. Southern. Is it Central Southern? Is that what they call it? Central Southern. Um, so that will be Mr. Horton and Ms. Harkey and Dean Kinney will be here in this room. And so we'll do 30 minutes, and then we'll switch um, around. OK. Um, if anyone needs to use the restroom, there's a restroom back here. There's some waters. Uh, and some coffee back here. Any other announcements we need to make? Okay, well, thank you, and look forward to the dialogue.